Rosie Bird, welcome back to Super Mario Maker 2. Today, we are gonna get started with something a little bit different. Of course, lots of you have been requesting that I finally get started making my own levels here in Mario Maker 2, and I wanna get to doing basically just that. But before we do, there's actually tutorials by Yamamoto in this game, which weren't in the original. I've heard they're a lot of fun to check out, so I wanted to get started with that. See, so yeah, we're gonna be going through all of Yama Yamamoto's like classes and tutorials, whatever they're supposed to be, which if we go into play, it's actually, well actually it might be in make. I don't really know exactly where it is. I've seen it before though. Um, and sometimes he'll offer it, but uh, we're, okay, here we go. If we go down here, it's Yama, Yamamoto. I don't know why I always want to call Yama, Yamamura's Dojo, sorry. Uh, I don't know who that is, but I'm thinking of. But anyways, Yamamura's Dojo, we can either do Maker Lessons or Mario's Moves. So I think that we'll just do maybe like one per episode or something. There's also Maker Basics. So maybe we should actually do Maker Basics and just sort of roll out with this. And I get that this might not be for everybody, so if you're not interested in this, that's okay. But we'll just try to you know localize it to one specific episode. So this is Nina, she's a Mario Maker 2 shirt. Where can you get one of those? They seem pretty cool. Hi everyone, I'm Nina, nice to meet ya. Coo -coo -coo, and I am Yamamura, licensed Super Mario Maker course instructor and semi-retired homing pigeon. We're gonna show you how to cook up some Mario levels. <laughs> coo, 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 coo. Uh, yes, thought before, we, though before we begin, you should know that my favorite foods are edamame and fried chicken. <laughs> Weird, I'm not sure how to feel about that, Kawamura. See, so she gets his name wrong too. It's Yamamura. Now, let, let's begin. So this is the basics on how to create levels. So if you don't know either, we can learn together, it'll be cool. In this introductory lesson, we'll cover the basics of making courses. The basics are really important, so you should probably pay close attention. The mode we're in right now is called Course Maker. Ooh. <laughs> First, we'll explain how to place parts. Parts are the various elements you can place in a course. The menu that runs along the top of the screen is called the palette. This magnifying glass button is the best way to find parts. Pressing it will open the parts menu. And as you can see, we can access a ton of different stuff through these little wheels. Uh, the parts menu is, is where you'll choose which parts you wanna put in your level. You can place a part in your level by moving the cursor to where you want to place it and by pressing A. Right, all right, let's practice by pressing a, placing a block. So as you can see, we can place a part now. This is pretty cool. I'm um, placing parts. Oh, there we go, I'm just pressing A and we can place down some blocks all over the place. Good job with those blocks, with those blocks, very creative. Cool, cool, keep in mind that there's a limit to how many parts you can place in a course. I think it's a pretty high limit though. As you can see, parts you recently placed will appear along the palette for later use. You can quickly check out the parts you place by running a test. Oh really? So yeah, that's where we can test player level. Go ahead and press minus to test your level. Okay, so as we're here, just press minus, and we can test out the level. We can see that there's actually coins in our question blocks, which is pretty useful. There we go, we got everything. And then when I'm done, do I do anything? Oh, oh okay, I've, I've reached the end. If your test didn't go so well, try moving your parts around. So we can go back to make. To do that, press minus to return to edit mode. Okie doke, so let's do that. And like, these are some super basic stuff, but I think it's important to learn it just to get fully comfortable because the uh, controls have changed for making things from the first game as far as I remember, at least a little bit. Uh, after placing parts in edit mode, it's good to quickly test to make sure they're set up right. Keep repeating the edit test process to make your course. Next, we'll explain how to erase parts. Press left on, and then move your cursor to this button and press A to enter erase mode. When in erase mode, move the cursor to a part and press A to erase it. Okay, let's mess around with erase mode for a little while. Erasing part. So, if we press this button right here, we can just go ahead and erase everything we just set up. <laughs> like it never happened. You monster, those blocks had families. <laughs> but don't worry, their pain is only temporary because we have undo dog on our side. Oh good. Just press the button and this good boy will undo the last action you made. Now then, let's go ahead and undo our last action. Okay, so undoing, I just press B. And if I, I gotta hold it down a little bit, but of course, undo dog will undo. Yay, the block that you brutally erased is back. You're a hero, kind of. Moving right along, let's talk about some other tools that'll come in handy. 
Press ZL slash ZR to activate the multi-grab and copy. This enables you to move many parts at once, copy parts and copy parts that you've placed. Now for something incredibly handy, the reset rocket. Press and hold this button to instantly destroy everything you've worked so hard to build. To be clear, it will erase all of the parts from your course so you can start fresh. Let's move somewhere with a lot of parts so we can test it out. Ooh, fun. Lots of parts over here. Okay, go ahead and hold down the ignition button. Erasing everything. So if we go, how do, what button do I press? Okay, I just gotta move over here. But, oh, here we go. Reset rocket, I gotta hold it down just like in the story mode. Three, two, one, and kaboom, it's all gone. All right, hooray, we're so destructive. Congratulations, you ruined everything. Well then, I guess that's all the basics of Course Maker. Huh, oh no. Oh, but first I should probably tell you how to save. Press this button to save or load levels that you've made. Save early, save often, I always say. Well, that's it for basics of Course Maker. Awesome, so now we know the basics, we can get into, I do not wanna watch the lesson again. <laughs> I think we got a good clear view on that, but now we can actually do some more maker lessons, and then I think in maybe another episode we'll do Mario's moves. I'm not really exactly sure what that is, but let's try the maker lessons. Wow, there's a lot of them. <laughs> So that's definitely why I want to do this all on its own episode. I don't know if I want to be doing all of them in today's episode, but I figure I'll do you know like a, a lesson video now, then I'll maybe make my own course, test out some of the things we learn in a future episode, then go back to doing more maker lessons. You guys can let me know. Maybe you guys will despise this episode and tell me never to do this again, and then I won't, but <laughs> probably be too late at this point. Uh, beginner, intro to making. Sure, let's learn all about it, because this stuff does teach you some good tips a lot of people are saying. Intro to making. Cool, cool, cool. Before we start making courses, I should probably explain what a course is. Courses? Where I'm from, we call them levels. Cool, cool, cool. Last time I checked, this was Yamamura's dojo. We call them courses here, wow. <clears throat> a course is a space that Mario travels across from the starting point all the way to the goal. On this way to the goal, he'll likely encounter various obstacles and enemies. Let's take a look. So you can see in this one, we have ourselves some question blocks and stuff. Cool, cool. Courses always begin from the starting point. From here, Mario will lead or head toward the goal. Off he goes, this is not me playing. This is just a game all by itself. Oh no, Goombas and Koopas too. It's a pretty, you know, simple new Super Mario Bros. level going on here. Got lots of coins to collect. Moving platforms and stuff, we got it, we got it. So it really is, you know, just telling us about the, the very basics of it. Wow, this player's not so bad though. Can he make the flagpole? I guess he's not gonna worry about it. If he can make it all the way to the goal, he'll clear the course. They're so excited, whoop! Yeah, he made it! Alrighty, so that player was able to complete the level they made, that's good. Hopefully we can do the same thing with our own. I like how he came out with a little ending there. In short, this course is everything between the start point and the goal. That's the basic overview of courses, though I'm sure it's all news to anyone who played a, Mario, played a Mario game before. Have fun making levels. So that was it for that first one, okay. Wow, that was weird, that was very simple. So that just sort of told us the idea of making something. Uh, workflow basics. Workflow basics. If you haven't played Super Mario Maker before, you might not know the first thing about making a course. So we are going to show you how. Wait, we're gonna make an entire level, like, right now? Yes, we are going to make a level right now. Oh yeah, take it away, Kawamura. My name is Yamamura. All right, let's start with some terrain, shall we? Whoa, okay, cool. And I like how it uh, just randomly makes different scenery. Next, we'll make some platforms that force Mario to jump. Okay, interesting. So this is very similar to the level of course we just saw the character play through. But obviously you can't just run to the right for that, you're gonna have to jump over it. And more of the same over this way. Yamamura's really good at this. <laughs> I'm a little worried. I don't think I'm gonna be able to live up to his, to his legendary building status. Okay, Nina, please test the course for me. Okay, so it looks like Nina's gonna give it a try. 
I like how it's the idea that Nina's playing it though. Nina's pretty cool, I don't know what happened to Mary O, because that was a character from the first Mario Maker. But, you can't make it any farther than that. Easy peasy. Indeed, now I'll go ahead and build until, build until the goal. So let's see, he's adding more stuff now. Okay, just like a straight line to the goal. Nothing more. Oh, he's building the second one now. I mean, he might be adding more. Okay, he's adding a little something. More jumps and stuff. Maybe a couple enemies here and there or something. A little bit of a playing course. Whoa, oh, that one's really high up. What are you gonna do about that? Maybe a power up or something. You have a lot of ground in there. How about an enemy or two to spice things up? Good idea, human. I'll add some Goombas and Koopa Troopas. There we go, there's a Goomba and a Koopa. Oh, and a Red Koopa too. Good variety. Oh, there's that moving platform we will need. Oh, he looks a little annoyed. <laughs> Maybe a little too much. Okay, give it a shot, Nina. Oh, let's see how Nina handles this one. Lots of different enemies. I hope she'll be all right. I think she will be, but. She's just gonna ignore that Koopa. <laughs> Not a problem. The red Koopa up there is a bit tricky. But she handled no problem. Look at that, even got those two down there. Okay, well, another course completed by Nina. She's great. <laughs> Nice, it was definitely harder than the first half. Most enemies move, which forces the player to have good timing. When making a course, think about how you want the player to feel during each moment. Placing and erasing parts is a snap, so unleash your inner mad scientist. All right, well, there we go, there's that first lesson done. Next one is on inspiration. On inspiration. <laughs> Are these two back? I wonder at some point will we be able to interact with them more like we were with the basics? That's sort of what I was looking for, is something where they'll sort of guide us along a little bit. Sometimes making a level can feel overwhelming because there are just so many options. In times like that, it helps to have some kind of inspiration for the course you're making. So let's talk about different sources of inspiration. The area you see here is a simple series of platforms for Mario to jump on. So what can we do to make this area more exciting? Ooh, place an enemy on the highest platform. Then maybe the enemy will drop down to challenge Mario. Very well, let's try putting an enemy there. Oh, okay, yeah, it's definitely a bit of a staircase. You think they'd use a little bit more slopes. So he should be able to jump on that Goomba, no problem. It is a bit more difficult than if they were both on even ground though, for sure. A single Goomba made this area slightly more challenging. Psh, one Goomba, wake me up when there's a real challenge. You want more enemies, do you? I guess so. Whoa, giant spinies, two of them. There you go, Nina. Oh, do not challenge Yamamura. He will he will really show you. Oh gosh, oh gosh, can you do it, Nina? Ah, come on, Nina. You're one sick bird. There's a lesson to be learned here. You must strive for a balance in all things. As you may have guessed, I use stairs as my inspiration for this area. Now we'll change areas to look and look at another source of inspiration. Oh really, where are we changing to? Hey, look at this, this is a little house, that's cool. Whoa, it looks like a house. Coo -coo -coo. Yes, mimicking the shapes of objects can be a great source of inspiration. Recognizable objects allow you to establish a theme and give your course a story. Yeah, like what if this house was turned into an enemy hideout? A fine idea. Cool, so we can't really, whoa, nice. To make this feel like an enemy hideout, I added a variety of enemies and obstacles. As you can see, thinking about the story you want your course to tell makes it feel much more inspired. Wow, very cool. Ah, what's wrong? This area looks much more unique than the areas uh, area that's nothing but ground, don't you think? Oh, I totally agree, it looks really cool. Yeah, all the pipes make this area look awesome. Up until now, we've been talking about using inspiration to shape the terrain. But you can also develop a theme for your course by using primarily one type of object or enemy. In other words, instead of throwing a disconnected jumble of parts into your level, try using a few parts you like in creative ways. 
Exactly, there are no rules to making a course, but try to put thoughts thought into which parts you're using. That's for sure, definitely want some kind of coherency. But there we go, there's that one done. I actually really liked that lesson, I had a lot of cool ideas, definitely. That's what I need to sort of keep in mind as we're figuring things out as we move into lesson four, which is fixing mistakes. Sometimes when you're testing a course, you'll notice something isn't quite right. Yeah, like all the time, but I always fix it right away. So let's talk about ways to fix your mistakes. First, please play through this area, Nina. I'm all over it. I wish we could do the little bit of playing, but I guess you know this makes it a little bit more simple. So what's the issue here? Oh boy, it's a big jump. Can you make it? You just gotta use the run button. Nina hasn't used it once. Hey, that the dash button on this controller is busted. There's no way I can make that jump. Oh. Yes, I sabotage your controller for demonstration purposes. This gap is too wide for you to jump over. So, how do you think we can fix this problem, Nina? Uh, you could start by buying me a new controller, <laughs> or we could just make the gap smaller. All right. I mean, I feel like that's not really too much of a mistake, but okay, because you know that's just using the convention in the game. But okay, making it smaller, testing each section, section and fixing it as you go is a good way to improve your course. When you come across a problem in your course, try fixing it in multiple ways to find a fun solution. Definitely. Oh, <laughs> removing it again, but also making a higher jump. Oh, interesting, so that'll definitely help as well. Just going way up and then way down. Let's hope at the least, or Nina's gonna fall to her doom. Oh my, she made it, just barely. Yeah, I still think fixing my controller is the best solution. Seriously, I just bought this thing. Indeed, every problem has multiple solutions. Okay, that was a really e easy la lesson, lesson for sure. <laughs> okay, lesson number five is testing. Testing. So yeah, I guess we got a test level before we you know, are able to post it. Okay, there's a path to the goal now. That means our level's finished, right? Not quite. Have you played it from the very beginning? Huh? I guess not. Give it a shot, Yamazaki. For the last time, my name is Yamamura. So it looks like they're gonna try it out a little bit. Give it a little bit of a test run. Hopefully it's actually completable. So far, so good. <laughs> I like how they, oh no, <laughs> the pipe's broken. What did you do? Ah, oh, someone call a plumber. I see we made a mistake when building this course. Let me fix this. Yep, there you go, good as new. Phew, much better. I'm just gonna jump right over it. Okay, that's good. Any other mistakes around here? Doesn't look like a whoa. Don't know what's with those blocks down there, but we'll just leave them be. Or not. <laughs> what are you doing down there? What is this about, Nina? Oh, that just a little uh, visual flair. Oh, oh, oh! Hey, look at that! Cool. <laughs> Looks like she got a run button fixed. Whoa! I didn't realize that could be an alternate path. Coo coo coo! Sometimes players will do things you don't anticipate. When you're testing your course, try to get into the mind of the player and find alternate routes. It's best you know all the ways your course can be played so you can shape your vision. I was so focused on making the top path, I didn't realize players could take the bottom path. It happens to the best of us, and I actually found the bottom path to be more exciting. It just goes to show, when you think you're done with your course, try playing it from the beginning with fresh eyes. Okay, cool. Okay, well that was a very fun lesson as well, just learning, you know, of course, trying to keep the player in mind. Now we're gonna be doing lesson number six, using parts terrain. Okay, so lots of different terrain parts to use, of course, so we'll start figuring that out a bit more now. In this lesson, we'll be talking about terrain parts. Let's start with ground, which is generally used as a foundation to walk on or for making walls. Let's see it in action. So of course, we've seen this quite a lot, making different jumps and stuff. That's definitely the case here. You can make like a little cave, a little alcove or something. Lots of stuff you can do. 
Placing terrain like so creates platforms that Mario has to jump on. But there's no rule saying that ground tiles have to be placed on the ground. You can also place them in the air to make floating islands. Next, look at the bridges, semi-solid platforms, and mushroom plat, or was that mushroom platforms? I guess, I don't know. Uh, these parts are interesting because Mario can jump through them from below to get on them, but he can't get through them from above. Yep, that's definitely interesting. We'll spice up the level a little bit. Also, let me show you something. Mina, do you think that you can get these four coins? The ones in the middle, easy peasy. So of course she can get them, but can she get back up? I don't think so. That's a bit of a problem. <laughs> no, the walls are too high, I can't get out. <laughs> Remember to keep in mind how high Mario can jump when designing your course. All right, well there we go, we got that. We can use one of those mushrooms or half or semi, what were they called, semi full platform, something like that to uh, help Mario get out of there if we needed to, but using parts, blocks, ooh, there's gonna be plenty of blocks, so that'll be cool. We got brick blocks, question blocks, and I mean, I guess that's sort of it, <laughs> I don't know. The brick block and question block parts are some of the most versatile and iconic tools in your maker toolbox. Mario can walk on blocks and blocks, <laughs> meaning you can use them as mid-air platforms. Let's try walking on some brick blocks. Okay, so as you can see, Mario just hops up and just starts walking across, no problem. So these are a lot more about different design tips than they are about strictly what the tools do sometimes, I've noticed, which is pretty cool. Next, I'm going to play some question blocks. It's sort of a mixture of both, to be honest with you. All right, the basic tutorial we did at the very beginning was definitely like, oh, this is what this button does, and this is what that button does, but this is more like, here's maybe trying to get started on figuring out how in the world you're gonna make your course, or just different tips along the way. Uh, you can put various parts inside of a question block. Whatever you place inside, the question block will pop out when Mario hits it. Oh yeah, let's stuff some parts in these blocks. Let's go Super Mushroom. So we got a mushroom in that one. Ah uh, yes, that's a power-up item. Trampoline time, baby! Yes, you can put certain gizmos in them too. Is that what the official name is, gizmo? And I'll stick a Goomba in here. Oh. Okay, that's not choice, but last but not least, a green Koopa Troopa. Oh, you are evil, <laughs> putting all these enemies in there. I'm getting too old for this. Go ahead and play it, Nina. <laughs> Poor Yamamura, try and stop me. Nina's fun though, she's pretty cool. Alrighty then, so, got a mushroom in that one, we already know. Got the spring, don't really need it too much. Watch out for the Goomba! Oh, you fool. <laughs> Didn't even bother getting the Koopa. Huh, it's kind of annoying when enemies come out of blocks. When a player hits a block, try to, ex they expect to find something good inside. I recommend you avoid putting enemies in them unless you can think of a fun reason to do so. I mean, I'm sure there's a couple of fun reasons. That's why they allow you to do it. Finally, we'll cover the brick blocks. Mario can break brick blocks by hitting them while he's powered up. That's right, small Mario can't break those suckers. Let's see what this means in practice. So of course, small Mario's gonna try to hit them. Nothing really happens, but turn in the big Mario, and boom, no problem. But you gotta be careful, because now he can't get up. That's right, you gotta be careful for sure. You don't wanna make the player end up trapping themselves. If you break a ledge made of blocks, you may not be able to clear the course. Think about this one designing. Try to avoid creating situations where the player has no option but to restart if they had, if, if they break a, a brick block. Alrighty, well now we know. Not gonna watch the lesson, lesson again, of course. But there we go, we're learning a lot and we're getting through it pretty quickly. We're a little bit less than halfway through, so we should be able to get done pretty soon. Using parts, this is enemies. Using parts enemies. Now I'll teach you about Goombas and Koopa Troopas. You probably know this, but enemies like Goombas and Koopa Troopas will hurt Mario if they run into him. Let's observe a wild Goomba in its natural habitat. <laughs> Running left to right on a little level. Of course, no nothing too crazy about a Goomba. We're all familiar with them. The Goomba isn't exactly a genius. It keeps moving forward when it reaches the edge of a platform, only turning around when it bumps into a wall. 
You can defeat a Goomba by stepping on it from above, like so. Okay, so of course we know how to do the Goomba jump. Boom, there it is. I mean, I'm not playing right now, but I sort of wish I was. Uh, next, we'll cover Koopa Troopas. Watch the movement of the green Koopa Troopa and the red Koopa Troopa. Of course, they're different beyond their coloring. The green Koopa Troopa will just fall right off while the red Koopa Troopa falls, or doesn't fall at all. He'll turn around right at the ledge. The green Koopa Troopa keeps moving forward when it reaches the edge of a platform, whereas the red Koopa Troopa turns around when it reaches the edge. Jumping on the green Koopa Troopa or the red Koopa Troopa from above will turn it into a shell and cause it to stop moving. But if you leave them there for a while, they'll pop back out of their shell and start moving again. But I think that's only for certain game modes. For the original Super Mario Bros, it might always stay a shell from what I remember, but I might be wrong. And boop, there he goes, he's out of there. I think it usually takes a little longer than that, but they just sort of cut it short for the tutorial. Mario can kick a Koopa shell by bumping into it from the side. It's, all, it's, it's also a good idea to think about terrain that allows players to use Koopa shells effectively. I wonder why the green ones and the red ones move differently. Don't, do you think it's cultural or biological? Biological, they're just programmed to move that way. Anyway, they are, there are many other types of enemies as well. Knowing the characteristics of each enemy type is important when placing them in your cor course. Enemies can create difficulty spikes in your course, so don't go overboard with them. Treat enemies like truffle salt. A little bit goes a long way. Alrighty, well now we know a bit more about how to use enemies, of course. Don't use too many, but I feel like that's sort of a big issue that a lot of uh, beginner critters do. They just throw in 50,000 enemies and it's just impossible to move like five feet without getting hurt. That can be a little bit of a problem. But now we're using gizmos, that really is the official name. In this lesson, we'll be talking about gizmos. Gizmos are handy for lots of things, including moving Mario around the level. We'll start with lifts. Let's look at the lifts in, in action. Okay, so as you can see, these lifts, I thought they were just floating platforms, I guess they're called lifts. You can make them move in certain directions, they can help you go over gaps, but it's a little bit more challenging than stationary platforms, of course. But, it looks like this Mario was able to make it on the other side. The moving lifts lets you across wide gaps and reach high places. Next, we'll cover the trampoline. Take a look. Oh, nice. So of course we know the trampoline, if we jump on it, gets us some super height, always fun. It's interesting that all these tutorials are in the new Super Mario Bros. game mode. I mean, I guess it all balances out. The trampoline is a great way to let Mario reach high places. Player actions can be different depending on the game style. There are some game styles that allow you to allow players to carry trampolines, including the one we're doing right now. Oh, there's the bridges. You can also adjust the size and movement direction of many gizmos. The fire bar is one such gizmo. Oh really, okay. So I, I thought the bridges were the gizmo here. I guess they're just sort of terrain. So of course we can change the length of these, maybe even the speed or the, I, I think the direction, yeah. So like which direction they're spinning, which can definitely change the difficulty of them depending on the situation. Oh no, I didn't, I didn't mean to do that, whoops. <laughs> but yeah, I guess he's just changing the direction now. So that one is a little bit long, that one's way longer, and that one's a good chunk longer too, but they're all spinning in different directions, which definitely makes it a tad bit more difficult. Lots more timing involved, jump! Good job. Okay. Changing the fire bar length and direction can really affect the difficulty of getting past it. For sure. Okay, well there we go, there are some different gizmos. I don't think that's all of them, because there's like stuff with the pal block and stuff, but it just sort of tells us some basics. Super mushrooms, let's take a look at this one. So just super mushrooms, nothing about uh, items, like just power-ups in general. In this lesson, we'll be talking about the Super Mushroom. If Small Mario munches on one of these, he can power up into Super Mario. Let's go get a Super Mushroom. All right, well, there's one right over this way. He's gonna just jump up there and get it. And of course, he'll turn from Small Mario to Big Mario, which allows him to break those brick blocks over there, no problemo. And that's about it. <laughs> of course, he can also take one more hit. Small Mario turned into Super Mario and broke the brick blocks, allowing him to advance through the course. Uh, are you sure it's cool just to leave power-ups lying around, or lying on the ground like that? Doesn't seem very sanitary. Good point, power-up items should probably be put into question blocks to make them feel special. 
With that in mind, I'll put the super mushroom in the question block. Alrighty, well that'll be a little bit better. So a question block right over, oh, which one now? A little bit of a mystery. All right, Nina, give it, give this a try. Mama's feeling hungry for a super mushroom. Okay, super mushroom for you. And once again, you're good to move forward. Pretty cool so far. I mean, obviously we know how to use super mushrooms, so not anything too crazy. Finally, there's one last thing I'd like you to keep in mind. Okay, Nina, transform into Super Mario and try to get all of the coins in the next area. You don't have to ask me twice. Okay, so what's going on here? I'm a little confused, but I guess we'll find out. Oh, but you got hurt. Ah, I see, and now you can't move forward. We sort of got this lesson a little bit before, but I guess we're getting it a bit more now. Of course, we wanna make sure that players can get past things or they'll be stuck in the level, and that won't be good. Ah, I turned back into small Mario so I couldn't break the block. And this stinking wall's too high for me to go back, so I'm stuck here forever. Nina's agony, while entertaining, <laughs> is precisely why it's important to avoid creating areas that trap players. I love how they have like a little rivalry. That's cool, so we now of course know about how to work with super mushrooms. Only what, five more to go through? That shouldn't be too bad. We got 11 here, coins. Lots of coin action. I feel like coins aren't as important in this one, or in Mario Maker in general, but in this Mario Maker 2, they are a bit more important than the original because you can have like coin requirements to complete a level. In this lesson, we'll discuss coins. Players are naturally drawn towards coins. When creating your course, don't hesitate to exploit the insatiable greed inherent in all human beings. What about zebras? Uh, what? I can't really blame you. Without coins, I couldn't purchase my delicious edamame. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and play some coins. So of course, it can be a good way to lead players through the level, try to find out where they're going next, or maybe just to reward them for adventuring a little bit to find a secret. I place them strategically to lure Mario towards places I want him to jump to. Nina, play this area and just do what comes naturally. Of course, I should be collecting the coins. And indeed it is, okay, very cool. All right, well, Nina was able to handle that just fine. Where am I? I remember seeing those shiny, beautiful coins, and the next thing I knew, I got Mario to the end. Why do you think that is? Because Mario's, your Mario skills are second to none? <laughs> Maybe? Hmm, no, I just like shiny stuff. Humans, now I'll introduce another way to place coins. You can put them in blocks as well, right? Yep, you can put them in brick blocks. First, I'll put a cache of coins to lure the player where I want them to go. Got some stuff up there, pretty cool. Nice little stack of them. This will cause, oh, what, what, what happened? <laughs> okay, just, Nina's already just playing, trying to grab those coins. <laughs> Is that what's happening right now? I think so. I wasn't done explaining. Huh, where am I? <laughs> I saw all those coins and I just kind of blacked out. Why did you put all those beautiful coins there? When you see this many coins lying around, you immediately want to pick them up, don't you? I place these coins here to give the player a sense of satisfaction. Wow, coins are more powerful than I thought. Coins are powerful indeed, but you must use that power responsibly. If you place too many coins in your course, they lo they'll lose all their power, you know, inflation and all that. <laughs> You should make the player course, or the player work to get coins. Humans want that uh, want that which they cannot have, after all. All right, well there we go, another lesson done. That one's pretty interesting. Of course, if you just have coins everywhere, it's not really gonna be worth getting them all. So you wanna make sure that they're just strategically laid out as we move on to lesson 12, which is tracks. I don't know what it means by that. Hmm. When you want parts to move around your course, use tracks, oh, these kind of tracks. Ooh, I love tracks, they're used to move stuff. I just said that, let's begin by placing some tracks. So there's a track up there, and over this way, making a little L. All sorts of them, cool. So you can put all sorts of things on tracks, you can put platforms, enemies, oh, and you can even make them curved. You can extend a track by sliding it in the direction that you want it to go. 
but you can't cross two tracks over each other, so don't get any big ideas. It'd be cool if you could. Mr. Y, what, what kind of parts can be placed on tracks? I'd say most parts can be placed on tracks, though there are some terrain and gizmo parts that can't. Let's see here. So of course, platforms can. As you can see, I just put a lift on the track. Wait, so I can put almost anything on a track? So many possibilities. Yes, tracks open up all kinds of gameplay options, like making vehicles to transport players. Let's see it in action. Okay, so here's Mario, he's gonna hop on top of there. Of course, he's gonna wanna try to get those coins, you better not fall off. Be very careful, Nina. I do like how the little screw in the center will spin. And there we go, you made it. I do like the idea of making a little hole so that like, you know, the platform can move but the player can't go through it. Ooh, I bet that would be more fun if you had to avoid enemies while you were grabbing the coins. Perhaps, it all depends on how you want to make your player feel. It looks like that's happening now. Oh, maybe we're putting enemies on there or something, I'm not really sure. Whoa, oh, gotta be careful. Here I added a grinder and created an area full of coins. Give it a go, Nina. On it. Okay, so you're gonna be able to make that jump. Oh, just barely. Go on, keep grabbing those coins. Ah, <laughs> too close, too close. That was very good of her though. She, she didn't get hit once. Combing tracks with hazards such as grinders can be can force the players to react in interesting ways. Seriously, even if I dodge the grinders, it doubles back after it reaches the end of the track. On that note, you, if you erase the end of the track, the grinder will fall off when it reaches the end. I'll show you what I mean. Zip, if we put one up there, but remove the end of it. Oh yeah, this is very interesting. You're up, Nina. This is where things can get very scary, because as you can see, it'll fall but land on this track, and now you gotta deal with two of them. Oh no. Why would you do that? Oh no. Watch it. Watch it. Oh, you can do it, you can do it. Yeah, you just barely did. Phew, I somehow managed to dodge both of the grinders, but they almost sliced me to bits. And there you have it. There are many reasons to use tracks to liven up your courses. The more creative you are with tracks, the more you'll be able to terrorize players. That is not good. But okay, very cool lesson with the tracks there. Good to know, I, I, I usually forget about those. That'll be useful to use eventually. And now we have themes! I'm excited about this one. There's so many themes in this game. It just, it's awesome. As you place parts in your course, there are many things you'll want to keep in mind. But before we get into that, we're going to have Nina play this course. Uh, okay. I think it means like themes like desert and stuff. But I'm not really sure. Oh gosh, there's a thwomp. Ooh, gotta be careful. Well, this is a tricky one. There's a ton of enemies. Okay, this is getting a little ridiculous. Ah, yikes. Why do you hate me? <laughs> For demonstration purposes. As you can see, this area is packed full of enemies with no rhyme or reason. It's obvious that the maker of this course didn't have a clear vision. They mistook difficulty for challenge. That's a big thing. I think for game development in general, not just Mario Maker courses, lots of, that's a really tough thing to get over is difficulty for challenge. There is a difference. I know what you mean. Sometimes when I'm making a level, I just want to stuff in every idea that pops in my head. Putting too many ideas in your course is an easy mistake to make. Chaos can be fun, but only if there's a purpose behind it. Yeah, whichever bird made this level messed up bad. Yes, this the course def certainly seems to lack a theme. Okay, so maybe they don't mean environmental themes just yet. If you want to challenge a player, try to pinpoint a specific skill you want them to demonstrate and only use parts that fit that theme. That's an interesting way of thinking about it. Let's look at another example. Okay, so what's going on this time? We've got lots of Goombas. A lot of Goombas, but this one's maybe a little bit better because you need to sort of balance your jumps on top of the Goombas. It's a little less random and a little bit more specific. Lots of Goombas. Okay, now it's getting a little ridiculous. <laughs> I used a Goomba theme for this course. You can make an entire course based on a single enemy if you want. Try to limit yourself to a few parts and find creative ways to use them. Okie doke. All right, well, there we go. There is one about theming. Not the theming I had thought, but hey, let's do number 14 on difficulty. And then we have one last one, and that'll be it for today's episode on difficulty. 
Since the dawn of time, philosophers, game designers, and seat cushion engineers alike have asked a question. How hard is too hard? Everyone has their own opinion, but this area here feels fairly difficult to me. That is a lot of enemies. If we want to make this area easier, we could reduce the number of enemies. All right, well, less Goombas, maybe one less Spiny. In one, I reduced, or area one, I see, uh, I reduced the number of Goombas. Oh. In area two, I changed the Spinies into Goombas, which can be squashed from above. But now they're just Goombas, that's a little bit lacking in variety. Uh, then in area three, I increased the space between the Goombas. Changing the number and layout of enemies made this area easier. But don't make it too easy, I like a good challenge. I'll now introduce another way to change the difficulty of a course. Oh really, what'll that be? Nina, if you would. Hmm. Whoa, that's a tough jump. You can make that though. It's just a bit of a challenge. Oh, come on, this controller is busted. I totally jumped off that block. Yes, I'm sure it's the controller's fault. Let's just make this area easier for the controller. <laughs> wow, okay, there you go. You're up, Nina. This should be much easier for sure. Ooh. There you go. As you can see, Nina was able to make the jump that time. Nailed it, first try. <laughs> Adjusting the size or width of platforms can also change the difficulty. Keep that in mind. So yep, you don't just have to put on enemies to make it more difficult. You can change the size of platforms, the types of jumps and where the enemies are, that kind of stuff. Number 15, our last lesson of the day, asking for feedback. Luckily, I have you guys for that. You can let me know your thoughts about whatever levels I end up making, hopefully. Uh, Nina, would you mind playing through this course and I, uh, I'm working on? Anything for you, Yamamara. <laughs> oh no, so close, it's Yamamora. Is it Mora? I don't know how to pronounce, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Yamamara, buddy. Looks like she's playing this course, whoa. Whoa, this is a tough one. She's keeping up with it pretty well. Hmm. So if she can get big Mario, she can get in there and get a bunch of coins, that's good. Interesting course from her pigeon buddy so far. Not really too much going on. It feels a bit simple. If you, if you want my feedback, which I don't know if he does, and that's the end. Not bad, good job to Nina for completing it. <laughs> oh yeah, Okie doke. So what did you think of the course? Let's see, the part where I had to jump across those tiny platforms was pretty tough. You mean this part? All the way over here, yep. Yeah, if I wasn't a world-class Mario player, I probably wouldn't have made it. Right, world-class. I put these platforms close together so players would could use small jumps to hop across them. Oh, one more thing. There was a part in the second half where you break the blocks to advance. Hold on, I'll move that. Move to that spot. <laughs> so it looks like he's not even following his own lessons right now. If I didn't get the super mushroom and jumped on the semi-solid platform on the right while I was still small Mario, I would have gotten stuck forever. Ooh, that's true. Good catch, I need to fix that. This is precisely why it's good to have, an, uh, have other people play your course and give you feedback. Feedback from other players always makes your course better. Yeah, other players will never fail to notice things you didn't see yourself. Everyone has blind spots. When you think you're done with the course, ask your family or friends to play it and tell you what they think. And be sure to thank them for it. Isn't that right, Tabasaki? Tepa, oh, come on. Alrighty, so there we go. 15 lessons and then some in today's episode. Let me know if you'd like to see videos on the intermediate and advanced courses because there's lots more of those too. So you can see there's 15 here in the intermediate, 15 more in advanced. That sounds like it could be a lot of fun. I actually had a lot of fun with this. And then there's still Mario's moves. I don't even know what this is, so I'll have to figure that out at some point or another. But with that being said, that is gonna wrap it up for today's episode of Super Mario Maker 2. Also subscribe to join the Zebra Herd. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.